Hello Akko here, this is a new series on how to get a start in Feed the Beast if you've never played it before. Uh, I'm going to do this from the point as if you've actually never played Minecraft before. If you've maybe seen some Feed the Beast videos, anyone have got this game, you never really played Minecraft and you don't know where to start. Feed the Beast has got a hell of a lot of different mods in it, so we're going to actually look how to get into the world and all stuff like that. First of all you need to go to the Feed the Beast website, which is just, just put FTB in Google. That'll let you download the launcher, and then from the launcher you can pick which pack you want. So we're going to use the Ultimate Mod Pack. So you can download that as a client or a server, depending if you uh, want to set a server up or not. So this is just, we're just going to use the client here, I'm going to play a single player. And I've gone with the Faithful Texture Pack for this set of videos. Um, Vasic's Faithful 32 Pack for Feed the Beast Ultimate. So all the textures that we're using here should be should be updated. So that Faithful looks like vanilla, but it's a little bit nicer, pretty much. So on this screen there, you should be. This is what you should be seeing: Minecraft 147 Ultimate Mod Pack. Yeah, you can look at all the mods it's got and stuff. Well, let's just jump into a game. And there's a couple of games I've already got. I've got a test that I use for just going to creative and testing stuff out which is quite useful to do if you want to work out how something works rather than use your resources on the, on your main game jump into survival you can put yourself in creative mode and you can just test stuff in there without actually breaking anything and let's play is where I started my let's play of my on my main let's play series but after a few series I turned that into a server so that's a very early version of my main let's play series so we're going to create a new world and you can change some things in here. Survival, hardcore, if you die, that's it, you're done. Uh, creative means you don't have to man for anything, you just get it all free. We're going to play survival, and there's some more options here. You can use a seed, which is basically a code that gives you a specific map. Um, some other things here, but we're going to leave all that blank. All that out as it is, should I say. And I'm going to call it Feed the Beast Noob Guide. And I mean noob affectionately, not as an insult. So in fact, let's call it noob. That's that's the affectionate way to call it noob. Um, create a new world. That puts you into a new world, surprisingly enough. So this is the uh, first time I've loaded up with that texture pack. So it may take a little while because of the textures. So in we go, I think. Come on. So here we go. So here we are in a new world. Now it spawned us in a take a bad look of it. If you press F3, there's a fair thing you can learn. Press F3, you get quite a lot of information there. You can see how much memory you're using up on the right, but it's kind of hid behind the map. Um if you look down the left hand side there, down near the bottom, you've got X, Y, Z, F, and then LC. LC it says Tega, that's what biome we're in. So you can see what biome you're in there. Get rid of that. Let's look at a few of our options before we do anything else. The sun's just coming up by the look of it, so we've got plenty of daylight. So let's just go into our options. And plenty of things you can change in here. I have my music off, my sound down at 20%. Let's look at our video settings. Uh, max FPS. Fire you may have to change some of these things depending on your computer. Brightness brights always useful. It gets very dark in the nether and underground and stuff. So first thing I like to do is I want to find somewhere where I'm going to live, of course. So I don't like living in, in a snowy zone. I want to be in some kind of normal zone. But before we do that, We've got some resources here that are going to be quite useful to us. The start of any Minecraft game, whether it's vanilla or any modded game, is punching trees. So we're going to punch a tree. And we're going to punch a tree a couple of times, get a few bits of wood. Uh, I'll get another bit of wood as well. There's three bits of wood. What we're going to do with them, you put them into your little crafting square there. You can turn them into, into planks. Now, you put four planks in a square, you get a crafting table. And then, because we're playing modded Minecraft, you make some sticks, put a stick in there, and put your crafting table in with a stick, you get a thing called a pocket crafting table. 
That's a very useful thing. So I've, put, I've got that in my inventory. So now if I press C, it brings that pocket crafting table up. So what's happened is it's made this part of my inventory into a crafting bench and anything that I craft in there will appear into here. And there's three keys there that I can use. X, C and B. What X does is X clears whatever's in there out. So if there's anything in there, so if you've got, if you've got a bit of a messy bag, but there's room over here, just press X and it'll put everything over there. You can also shift click will put things into there or take things out of there so shift clicking your inventory bits obviously it can't do the actual crafting tool itself it'll just pop you out of there because you can't craft with a tool when it's in that bit shift left clicking will get things in and out of there and then if we put things in again the c button it'll spread things around in a circle so if we had if we had eight bits of wood there and pressed c it'd have completed that circle or square should i say and then the b button what the B button does is that'll even things out. So if we've got two piles there, we wanted two piles of three, the B button, it even that one to three and three. So that's pretty useful. Before we craft anything, one last thing I need to mention. When you very first start, you'll probably be in cheat mode there. A cheat mode, if you look, you've got all this extra stuff. You can cheat things in. You can set yourself into creative. So if that, this is if you single player or if you serve it, if you set as an op, if it's a server. An op is like an administrator. So the first thing you want to actually do, the first time you open up your inventory, is you want to go into there and switch that into recipe mode. Press done. That gets rid of that. And now if you click on something there, it'll give you the recipe for it. So you can make wool with four bits of string. That's what that's telling us. So you click on any of these things. I'll show you the recipe of getting that. You can get blue wool by using an indigo dye and a bit of white wool, for example. And let's just show you quickly if he was in cheat mode. If he was in cheat mode and did that, if press white wool, it actually gives you a stack of 64 wool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn delete mode on. And I've deleted that now, so that's gone. I'll turn delete mode off again. And I'm going to go back into recipe mode. There we are, back in recipe mode. So now if I click something, it just tells me the recipe. So that was that's what that's telling us. You can also just mouse over stuff here. If you press your R button, that also shows you the recipe. And another thing is, if you press the U button, that shows you what the things are used in. So if I've just mouse over that lamb wool there, I pressed U, and that showed me all the things that you can use green lamb wool in. So the 16 pages of shaped crafting. Now shaped crafting means it's you have to have things in a specific slot. So there's 16 different recipes there that can use green wool. Various things, we don't have to look at all them yet, there's loads of different stuff. And then... At the top here, you can cycle through. So shapeless crafting means the wool card and the lamb wool there could be anywhere. So the wool could be in that corner or that corner or that square or that square. The wool card could be anywhere. So that's shapeless. That's the difference between shape and shapeless. You've got micro blocks, which is part of a mod called Red Power. That you actually need a saw and that can cut blocks into little blocks. And then pulverizer is a machine. So it's showing that if you put piece of wool into a machine you can get some string so it goes through all the different things and then we're back to shaped so there's the things that you can use green wool in so anytime you want to see anything in any mod or you want to find anything there's 90 pages of this so but you can look for things by crafting by typing them in there so if i want to find out how to make an axe for example type in axe there's all the different types of axes so if i just want to make a wood axe a uh, wood pickaxe where is it? I don't see the wooden one. That, there it is. Wooden pickaxe. I've clicked on that. So it's telling me it's three bits of wood and two sticks. So that's showing me how to make that. So if I go back into my crafting thing there. Well, I've got three bits of wood. And I've got some sticks. So there we go. I've made a wooden pickaxe. And I get a little achievement for that as well. The other thing is we've got a hell of a lot of mods. If you're looking for something from a specific mod, which you'll learn later on what kind of things are from what mods, if you click on this item subsets up here, you can actually filter things by what mod they are. So if we were, for, for, if we were looking for something from, let's keep it easy, if we were looking for something from IC2, which is industrial craft, which is a lot of machines and stuff. If you double click on that, that'll filter down mostly to IC2 stuff. There's some things that are always in there, like these things don't seem to have a home 
floppy disks so no, no matter what you filter down to there'll be certain things there that shouldn't be there but all these things up here are industrial craft tool things so you can filter that down you can filter that further so if i want to look at um eu storage eu is a type of power so if i want to look at eu storage that's filtered it down again so actually you can ignore all these they shouldn't be there but the only th the only things there for eu storage are a bat box an mfe which stands for uh, don't know <laughs> and the mfsu storage unit something something right i picked a real bad example there because i can't remember what they stand for but then you can click on them you can see how to make them so and then if you want to get rid of this filter you just double click on the item subsets there and it'll put everything back again and there's also a tab here called mod and that actually has everything ordered by what mod they're from so if you go down again we can go let's look we can find alphabetically all the different stuff so i see tools not actually in there i was going to show you it from a different place but that's not actually in there and creative tabs is another thing that shows all the different mods so it takes a bit of getting used to all these different ways of finding stuff but you can as soon as you know what mod something from you can pretty much find it in there so one of the advanced mods for example is greg tech which we just saw there greg tech add-on uh no so you want greg tech oh they're creative tabs of course mod greg tech add-on so there we go there's loads of different stuff that greg tech adds uh that's gonna be pretty overwhelming if you just started playing but all you need to know is you can slowly work your way up and you can filter your NEI so you can see just specific things you're looking at right the sun is getting over there we need a couple more things before it gets dark one of them things is a bit more wood and i've made a pickaxe where i should have made a wood axe really so let's keep punching this tree and one more bit of wood and let's make a pickaxe now I've got my pocket crafting tool still, so I can do everything in there, which is good. Most things, especially when it comes to shaped crafting, what I mentioned, is it's shaped. You're actually making a shape of what it is you're making. So if there, look, the wood axe is roughly that shape. This is all vanilla stuff. So it's stuff you probably know if you've played any kind of Minecraft at all. So let's get us a wood axe. And let's just finish killing that tree with a wood axe, which will chop it down a bit quicker than just punching it there we go and then one of the first things you're going to want is a weapon of some kind so we've got enough bits of wood there so two bits of wood and a stick gets you a sword there we go now we've got a weapon and then something quite useful that we saw around here was sheep so i'm going to look for them sheep and we're going to want to kill three sheep four sheep but animals that's what they're for animals are resources let's kill that one what that's dropped is a bit of wool we need three bits of wool before it's night time what that'll do is that'll let us make a bed and if we can make a bed that means we can sleep if we can sleep it means monsters are going to get us at night so there's a black sheep still counts as a sheep though and even though these are different colors if we go back into our crafting tool again three bits of wool oops first of all i need to turn them logs into planks so let's get everything out of there put the logs in there turn them to planks so I'll put three planks on the bottom three bits of wool across the top now we've got a bed very nice and it's getting dark see the sun's going down so before it gets too dark what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to sleep so i'm going to put this bed down and it's maybe not dark enough just yet yes it is so there we go i'm sleeping so now no mobs are going to spawn because we slept through the night now it's morning time the sun's coming up over there and we've avoided monsters which is one of the key things unfortunately you don't always have sheep where you spawn so the next night we come to will look as if we didn't have any sheep and the best thing to do if you haven't got any sheep is just to jump in somewhere like this and start caving so i'm not sure what that is but my little wood pick is not good enough so what we need to do now is we need to upgrade our tools so let's jump in this little hole before we find some of this looks 
like a good place to start mining some stuff. Now, I'm not used to this texture pack, so some things I might not recognise. I'd probably recognise that if I was playing my usual texture pack. That's maybe amber, I'm not sure. What I've done here is I've grabbed three bits of cobblestone. Now we can start upgrading our tools. So we can upgrade from a wood axe to a stone axe. And the stone axe may let us mine a bit quicker than the wood axe. It may let us get that thing there. So it will, yeah, so look at that, there we go. So that, of course that's copper, of course it's copper. So that's what copper looks like in this texture pack. Copper is going to be pretty useful, so we'll grab that. Like so. I've got a first bit of ore there. Copper ore, we're going to keep hold of that. And this stuff over here looks like coal. Also very useful yet, so we'll grab some coal. So now we've got some copper and some coal. One of the important things that you can do with coal is if we make some more sticks, so there's eight sticks, and with the coal you've got torches. So one stick and one bit of coal makes four torches. So our three bits of coal there, I've got 12 torches. So now when we go down here, into the darkness, not that dark because it comes back out again, we can put a torch down, we can light things up. Now monsters can spawn anywhere where there's not a lot of light. So, because this is dark in here, a monster could spawn next to me right now. That's something you shouldn't do. You should never man the block you stood on, because you don't know what's going to be down there. We can't see much down here at all. So I'm going to put a torch down so we can see. And I'm going to get some coal. Now, the next thing I like to do is I like to set some kind of house up. Now, some people are different. A lot of people start in a cave. I generally make a little house. But I think I'm going to actually start in a cave. But we're still in this Tega biome, as you can see by the snow on the minimap. While I mention the minimap, I'll just say, if you look under the minimap there, it's got the coordinates of where you are, minus 297, plus 200, and 59 is the level we're at, so if we go up a block there, 60, look, down 59. So that's pretty useful. Some other useful things that come with a map in Feed the Beast. Uh, if you press M, it takes you to the minimap options. There's a lot of options in here. By default, on your radar, it'll have hostiles on. I'll just turn that back off, back on a second and show you. So there's no hostiles around, but if there was, if there's any monsters around, they'd be shown on the minimap now because I've turned that back on. But I've got that turned off because I think it's a bit cheaty. There's also, um, what is it? Enable cave mode. With that one, you can see what's underground. I don't think we're deep enough to show that. I also have that one turned off as well because I don't want to see what's underground. It makes things a bit too easy. But if you're just starting up, you may want to start with that and then turn it off later. If I was you, I'd turn it off to start with. I think it's not needed. And it's a, I think it's a bit, yeah, I think it's a bit cheaty. So I'm going to turn that off before I remember. So, oops, wrong button. Let's go into there again. Press M. Turn K mode off. While I'm in here, we've got this other thing, waypoints. Click on that, it takes it to there. You can also press B to get to there. No, you can't. B is a little bit different. Go to M, waypoints, and then if we've created a new waypoint, that's what the B button takes you to at that point. So if we were to create a waypoint anywhere, so I'll call this one test. Back to the game. Now if you look, we've got a waypoint there called test. If you look on the minimap, there's a green dot where the waypoint is. And if it was very far away, if it was up to a thousand meters away, we'd be able to see that still. If it was over a thousand meters away, there'd be a little arrow on the minimap up there. So let's go back into that and get rid of it because we don't need that. Your waypoints, there's our test. If you're an op, you can teleport to your waypoints. Well, what we're going to do is just we'll delete that. Are you sure you want to remove this waypoint? Yes, please. So we'll get rid of that. So now we've got no waypoints again. Let's go back to the game. So you can play around your map settings, see what's what. Now, I saw some in the distance over here that we're going to go look at next. First of all, there's a beehive. We can't get bees out of that yet because we've not made a thing called a scoop. Now, if we had a bit more wool, I could make a scoop. We don't need bees just yet, but that's what beehives look like in the world. And if you look around, I just said a zombie. So there's a zombie around here somewhere. There's some uh, resources down here, so I'll have a quick look down here. This is iron. We'll grab some of that. What we can do with iron is we can upgrade our weapons and tools. 
and we can make armor. But to do that, we need to smelt it, so we can't do that yet. But we can grab a bit. Now, if you look on our mini map, you see down to the southwest of us, there's some structures. That's an NPC village. That's going to be quite useful. So I'm going to go have a little look there next before we actually set up our house. I think once we find a decent place to set up a house, now it looks like we're out of the snowy biome. If we press F3 again. You see we're in a woodlands biome now. Down there, see LC? 79B, woodlands. So we're in a woodlands biome. Woodlands are quite nice. A bit uh, tr full of trees, like, as you'd expect woodlands to be. Well, let's grab all this coal. And then we can head across to that NPC village, see if there's any goodies there for us. And then we can set up a base. And that will probably be a good sign off point of this first episode. So I've dug down there, got a little bit of resources. We've got 41 coal, got 8 iron, 6 copper. Well, we can't do anything with that yet because we need machines to do stuff with that. Now, there is a vanilla machine called a furnace that we can make, that we probably will make. It's a very useful first machine. Uh, and we'd need eight cobblestone for that, which I've not got. So I'm just going to run back down there, grab a little bit more cobblestone, which I should have done while I was there. Let's grab a little bit more of that. And we'll grab a little bit extra for some uh, tools if we need them. Like so. It's got a little bit of cobble there. 18 cobble, that's good. Now let's go have a look at this village while well, it's still light. Let me let me up, please. So this is a pretty big village by the look of it. Now some useful things in villages. So let's through, let's have a quick explore of this place. First of all, the food source. So this this stuff's wheat. We can make that into bread. There's also so like potatoes or maybe carrots. This will take a little while to grow. So if you hang around in the village for a while, there's more sheep as well, so we can make another bed. Or we can make a scoop for some bees, but we don't need... We can't handle any... We can't deal with the bees yet, so there's no point in doing that. These have villages in. Villages, you can trade stuff. So this guy, if we had an emerald, we could get some bread, which is a really bad deal. But there's also stuff in the buildings. So first of all, I'm just going to make a furnace out of cobblestone. So if I put that in there, press the C button... I'll make it to a square. You see, that's a furnace, eight bits of cobble. Well, as soon as we're here, let's nick this guy's cobble, this, this guy's furnace. So this is a smith building. So we have a couple of furnaces outside. They've got some lava outside as well, so if you need a little bit of lava, you can make a bucket once you've got some iron. And you can pinch a little bit of lava. And they also have a chest inside. So let's have a look in the chest. Well, that's quite nice. In the chest, we've got a bronze chest plate, bronze boots, Steel helmet, steel axe, iron pickaxe, some coal coke and some iron. So we've got a really nice haul from there. Let's put all that stuff on. So we've got a better axe, iron pick. We've got a really good, really good bit of stuff from that. And we can knit the chest. So we've got a chest to put all the stuff in as well. So let's keep it searching. See what else we can find. So I'm going to check all the buildings. Might have some useful stuff in here. Let's have a quick run through this. Now, you can live near an NPC village, but you've got to be aware that if you're living in within range of this, this will stay loaded all the time, which means on a night, monsters will come and they'll fight your villagers and kill them. So you've got to be careful. You want to make it so that if you're living near a village and the village stays loaded in, then you need to protect your, NP the, your villagers who live there. This is a Thorncraft Tower. So what will be in here is if we go up the stairs there, there's a couple of useful things. There'll be a, always be a chest in here, and that'll have some Thorncraft stuff in it. So we've got some knowledge fragments, some glass bottles, and a skeleton skull. Not very useful, but not very well useful, but not very useful at the minute. Well, it gives us another chest. And there's always a bit of glowstone in these, so we'll have that bit of glowstone as well. That could come in handy. So we'll take that. Our inventory's getting quite full. And we've got a, a normal tower here. I don't think there's anything in these. But we'll have a quick check. No, I don't think there was. Let's uh, double check on the roof. I'm pretty sure these don't have any chests in. No, these are like a normal 
These are your standard uh, church that's in a NPC village. So they look similar, they're both quite tall. But that one has definitely got a different kind of style to that one. And some very useful NPCs here that I should show you as well. The guy who just passed as we went in there, I'm not sure where he went, had like a yellow top on. He was an apiary, apiarist. Well, that was that means there's a this guy here. He can give you bee stuff, so if you give him a princess, he'll give you an emerald. What that means is there's also an apiarist building here with a couple of apiaries in there, which is very useful. It means we can pinch them. They'll come in quite handy. And this guy here, Eye of Ender. That's very good as well. Now Emeralds gets us an Eye of Ender. This is like a, a priest type NPC. Now it's getting dark, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I've got stuck on a bit of, a, bit of the furniture there. I'm going to run in here with all these guys. I'm going to put my bed down. And I'm going to stay in this guy's house for the night. Stop any monsters spawning, killing these guys. I want to kind of protect your villagers a bit. I say protect them, but I'm going to nick his apiaries. I'm not going to nick him right now. I'm going to come back from once we've got a base set up. But I'm quite into the bees, so I'll be showing a bit of getting started with bees in this series. So we should be coming back and pinching them. Because, let's have a little look on the NEI. So apiary is where your bees live. There's a more advanced one called alviary as well. Apiary for a start, it's a shaped crafting, so it's just some wood and some wooden slabs, but there's also that thing there called an impregnated casing, and for that you need a machine called a carpenter, and the carpenter has stuff called seed oil in it, so we need to find a source of seeds, we need to be able to squeeze that into oil, you need to put that in the carpenter, so there's a bit of a path, there's a bit of a building path just to get an apiary, so finding some in the village like that is quite nice to start with, it lets you get started a little bit quicker. There's this guy, I'm not sure what some of these guys are. One of these is probably a Mistcraft villager. That's why I keep having a look around. I've also seen some else special there that I want to look at in just a minute. So I'll keep looking through all these buildings. And in a minute, we're going to have to have a little fight because that there, that there's a Foundcraft Greatwood tree. And Foundcraft Greatwood trees have all got this big two by two trunk. Some of them are special, they have these cobwebs on. And what that means is down under the bottom corner of one of these there's a spawner and that'll spawn spiders. So we're going to kill them before they spawn like so and then underneath that spawner there's always a chest. Look at that, we've got a portal gun, very lucky. We've got a portal gun to start with, excellent. We've got some redstone, we've got a bucket, some copper, very nice haul there. Getting a portal gun is excellent. Portal gun, if you've ever played the game Portal, if, you've, if you're aware of the game Portal, it's pretty much like the portal gun in that game. It's a very advanced bit of kit, if you have to make it, but there's a chance from dropping in chests. So we've been extremely lucky there, extremely lucky. And now in here, this is like a library. Very useful because we can break these. Breaking a bookshelf gets you three books. Books are also very handy when you start off. They take leather and paper to make, which we haven't got either of. Leather, you need cows. Paper, you need reeds. But we haven't got either of them yet because we've got no farm or anything set up. So we'll nick some books. 21 books. Thank you very much, village. This village has been very good to us. Very good indeed. Got a couple more buildings to check. So that's just a big empty building. And this could be an interesting building. No, no, this is just another library. So we'll take another 21 books out of here. Excellent. Thank you very much, villagers. There's also a couple of crafting tables, if you notice in the corner in these. But we've got a pocket crafting table, so we don't need that. I could have pinched them as well. well yeah, we don't actually need them. And I think we've pretty much been in every building, I think. I think we've had a good look around here. Let's just check that building. I don't think we've been in there. That's just another one of them big buildings. Looks like there's nothing in it. Yeah, I think we've checked everywhere. So we've had a good look around. 
the only building that we would have liked here that I don't think there is here is a building from Mistcraft which could have given us a writing table and you can use a writing table to make Mistcraft ages and you can start that quite early on if you wanted to and that gives you a whole lot of different options so let's go for a run up here well, plenty of resources here this looks like quite a nice place these are pumpkins I'll grab a couple of them they're going to be useful for us. We don't need loads, but while we're near some, let's grab a couple. And now I think what we could do with is a nice little hole in the ground. We could set up our first little basin. And from there, we can start ranging down into the earth for mining stuff. I'm going to get a little bit away from the village, but let's tell you what, before we go, now I think this video might be getting a bit long. I need to wrap it up pretty quick. But before we go, let's run back over here. And just at the edge of this village here, I'm going to press B and I'll make a waypoint called Village. Because that's going to be a useful place we might want to come back to. We'll, we'll definitely want to come back to for the apiaries at some point. There's a bat there, look. So there must be a cave around here somewhere, I think. I think bats have to spawn underground. I may be wrong. Well, there's probably some kind of cave system around here somewhere. A little bit close to the NPC village so if we, if we was to make our base here that would stay loaded all the time so when it's night time they'd get attacked by zombies and once you've been playing for quite a few days the zombies would have probably killed off all the villagers so you've got to be aware of that. If you want to make sure your village is safe, make sure you're a little bit away from it or if you've got resources put fences around and stuff like that or lights and air uh, set the villagers that way. That looks pretty good over there. I think we're far enough away from the village. So we've got a little bit of a trek to go to the village there. Um, things can spawn 128 meters from the player. So we're actually still in range of the village here. So the village might get some action if we live in here. But I think this looks like a good place for us to start as a little house. What's that? That's just a bit of light, okay. So, 120 odd meters, let's risk it. Let's set up a little base. Oh, there's a creeper. Let's get our first uh, interaction with some hostiles. So, just check this, make sure it's safe up here. Right. Oh, it's all right. We'll set up a little house down here. Don't know where this marble is. Marble looks quite nice. That's what this white stuff is. We can create a little square area. We can set up our chest that we've got. There they are. Let's get our chest there and we'll put another one on top. And we'll start putting our stuff in our chests. We want our crafting tool. Portal gun. I'm, going to, I'm not going to show you the portal gun yet because it's a little bit advanced. But I'll show you it really quick. Basically, you can left click, puts a portal there. Right click, puts a portal there. And now we can go through the portal. Excellent. I'll show you the workings of that in a bit more in depth later. The R button cancels the portals. For now, we'll put that in our chest. We want to look after that though. Very nice. And just dump all this stuff in there for now. Apart from our fairness. We're gonna need some food pretty soon. So we're getting quite hungry. I should have killed some animals, got some food. There we go, we've got a fairness. We can't sleep because it's daytime. But once we sleep, this will put our spawn point to it. And there's our little base. So I'm gonna call the first episode there. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if it's worth carrying on. We're going to start looking pretty soon how to process our ores, and then not just process them, how to double them up. Because in Feed the Beast, there's a few ways to double your ores up. So instead of getting one ingot from one bit of copper or iron, you can get two. So that's one of the first things we're going to look at. And we're going to go on from there. So yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you liked it, I hope you join me next time. Cheers. Bye.